This old yard found new roots in pieces of the past. In 2003, when Brianna Mariani and Mark Beekler settled into an elderly East Austin bungalow, they put their backs and creativity into its restoration. We're just getting started on renovating our house. We've done other things first. We did the yard and then we built a guest house in back because we didn't have any room in our house to have anybody except on the couch. It's such a small old house. Then the last thing, the most recent thing we've done is built a catio because we've got all these inside cats. We've got five inside cats. Four of them came from the street and were just not quite street smart. So we got them fixed and brought them in. And I just felt bad that they couldn't go outside anymore, but we didn't want to let them out. Brianna and Mark have always adopted abandoned, mistreated dogs. The cats came with the neighborhood. There were a lot of unfixed feral cats, uh, probably 15 at one time, that I set about fixing. And um, the Humane Society has a really good program for that, thank goodness. There were just so many cats. And you see, like, in the neighborhood, there's groups that it, on different blocks that look the same, that you know all came from the same family. I found homes for about seven. They were also fixing up the small front yard. Giving it geometric diversity broadened its visual scope. Mark offset the rectangular yard and chain link fence with curving beds and narrow strips of palisade zoysia. To echo the lines of the fence and house, they laid straightforward flagstone pathways. Their raised bed design brings together both contours. Graduated levels of old bricks, given a paintbrush facelift, frame shapes of all kinds. Rotund golden barrel cactus and leaf clustered agaves join flowering perennials. Even edibles get a spot in repurposed galvanized buckets. They tucked in foundling trinkets and rusty hued small boulders. Rather than hedge out the neighbors, fence beds alternate screening plants with breezy views. Food and water attract an active wildlife population. They made the backyard pet friendly. And things just kind of evolved around the animals, it seemed like more and more. The dogs would play and hit any shrubs that we put on along the side, they'd just take them out. They're 70 pound dogs and they'd just take them out. So we got the watering troughs and put plants in there. We built the guest house in back and we do Airbnb sometimes and we have other family members, some who may be older, and we decided to divide the yard in half in back so that the dogs could be kept out of the back area. And that kind of started this whole thing. The grass didn't grow in back anymore because of the shade and the dogs. So we just decided to mulch half of it where the dogs played most of the time. And in the back half, we just did gravel because it's shady back there too. It's kind of a bonus back there too, because one, it's easy. We can get the leaf blower out just to clean it off. So it's kind of low maintenance. Also, we found that Jack, the long haired dog, does not like baths. And we found that it's not so much the bath, it's being restrained that he doesn't like. So we have to, during the bath, we have to let him go several times and then he'll just run off and kind of shake and then he'll come back to us when we call him and we'll continue with the bath. But if we lock him in the gravel part, he, when we let him go, he sometimes will roll around on the ground, but it's the gravel. So he's not like rolling in the mud as he would be doing in the grass. The mulch part has its, you know, part for them to play and, you know, it's softer. And then the back part, also good for bathing. <laughs> then they built the catio to let their feral cat rescues enjoy the outdoors we decided to make it match our back gate and our fence. It's still kind of evolving. There's a lot of stuff we've learned about it, but it's good, they like it. There was a small learning curve of a couple weeks. They all kind of acted like we were gonna put them back out on the street, <laughs> which we weren't. But now they just go in and out constantly. We realized that you have to put the shelves and you have to stack them so they're like a ladder. You know, you can't just, they have to go, be able to go from one shelf, jump to the other shelf, jump to another shelf to get to the highest shelf. She advises to research cat doors. 
You're putting it into your wall, so it's gonna be there a while. I mean, or your door, we got one for the wall. I didn't want something that's gonna fall apart and we're gonna have to open up our wall again. But I know it's got like a metal interior. The the flap is really thick too. It really, and it's got mag, I mean, maybe they're all like this, but it's it works really well. And it's got two magnets. When the cats go out, it hits those magnets again. And uh, you know, in the heat of the summer, we just keep thinking, oh, the air conditioning's going out. But it's there's a thick plastic door, and it seems to work really well. Our house is about three feet up with the piers. So to, for them to come out that door from the laundry room, it was about three feet above the ground. So we had to build a little platform and then build a ramp down from that. So it ended up there's a little dog house kind of design back there by chance. And I put a little dog bed uh, under there. So they do use that sometimes. It's cooler in the summer, you know, and sometimes some will be like way up on top. We did put grass in the bottom. It's like the only grass in the backyard. It's, it's struggling a little bit. I think it might not be getting enough sun, but I'm gonna see if I can make it go rather than put artificial down there. But they do really, they go down there and roll in the grass. Everything I do, I have to see if it's uh, toxic because they're gonna chew on it. You know, whether it be just a little toxic or a lot, but years ago, I had a cat get hold of a colancho leaf, and those mother of millions or whatever with the, that are all around here, um, and he just, we brought it in for the winter, not knowing it was super toxic, and he just got one leaf and chewed on it, carried it around, played with it, and I had to feed him through a tube in his throat for about two months. I mean, it was, it was horrible. In their garden, home, and neighborhood, Brianna and Mark want to make a positive impact. The Humane Society has a free spay and neuter for feral cats, which is just an amazing program because I'll go in there, you drop them off between like 6 and 8 a.m., and they'll have like 80 cats sometimes. They do it two and three times a week. And in one session, they'll have that many cats. And I just think, what if people weren't doing this? bringing these cats in and trapping them, what would it be like? It's still a problem, it's a huge problem. It's kind of amazing. There's a lot of people behind the scenes doing a lot of stuff.